the biggest thing that happened this week, and that's the Bears trading the number one overall pick to the Carolina Panthers. So I'm going to start with you first, Dells. We know that the Bears gave up the first overall pick, but the Panthers gave up DJ Moore, the ninth overall pick, the future first, this year's second, and a second round pick in 2025. So all in all, the Bears got two first round picks, two second round picks, and DJ Moore for the first overall pick in this draft. I didn't think this deal was going to be out there, honestly, for the Bears. When I was thinking about what they could possibly trade back to, I always saw four as the ideal spot because they could still get one of Jalen Carter or Will Anderson, especially before the Carter, you know, legal situation was going on. You still get a blue chip prospect, um, and then you still get extra draft capital down the line. But if you could go from one to nine, I know you're not going to get maybe that top premier guy, but you bring on two additional or one additional first round pick, two additional second round picks, and you get a top 20 receiver, by far the best receiver on your team. Now you have a receiving core with Mooney, with Claypool, and most importantly, DJ Moore, who is honestly on a pretty steal of a contract. I think his cap hits around 17, 18 million dollars this year. So we see how much the wide receiver market has really boomed in the last couple of seasons. That's an absolute steal for someone of DJ Moore's caliber. And I know at number nine, maybe you don't get Will Anderson, you don't get Jalen Carter, but there's a good chance you'll get your choice of the first tackle off the board, the first corner off the board. So you're still going to be able to, you know, plug and play holes that you would have been able to get at one or at four, assuming you don't go quarterback, go Justin Fields. For the Panthers, I know a lot of people are saying it's an overpay. You gave up a lot to go up from number nine to number one overall. They've needed a quarterback. They needed a quarterback really ever since Cam Newton had stepped away. They've tried different guys with Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield. None of it has worked. They're just retreading guys that we know do not work in the NFL. So I understand and I appreciate the aggressive move to go up from nine to number one. It sounds like C.J. Stroud is their guy. Um, Frank Reich historically has gone for those bigger body, physical type guys. That's why everyone leans Stroud over a guy like Bryce Young. And Stroud is probably just a much more safe prospect than another, another physical guy like Levis or Anthony Richardson, the best pocket passer in any out of all of these quarterbacks. So aggressive moves typically work off in the NFL. DJ Moore is a great receiver. He's not a top five guy that's irreplaceable. You can get someone who's going to come in and can give you a thousand yards. Um, so obviously it hurts to give him up because he is by far their best offensive player. If you need a franchise quarterback, this does that. So I think it's a great move for both teams. But I do think the Bears got maybe the biggest haul I've ever seen from the number one overall pick. I don't know, man. I disagree with that point. I, I don't think it's the biggest haul. And, and that's because I was looking at the history of first overall picks traded. I, that I've and, seen. That I've seen. Not the... <laughs> Like oh. Ricky Williams shit, but <laughs> oh no, I, I know in, in 2016 the Titans traded with the Rams for the first overall pick. That's a fact. The Rams got Jared Goff. The Titans, with the picks that the Rams gave them, selected Derrick Henry, Corey Davis, and John U. Smith. Well, that's after the fact. We we mm -hmm. don't know what these picks are going to be. They I know. Just hit they, on those picks. No, I know. But I but... also say this: the Panthers giving up their first round next year. That's scary. If I'm the Bears, I'm, in, I'm anticipating this could be a top 10 pick. The Panthers are not in a position where they're going to be really strongly competing. This year, they weren't very strongly competing. Their defense kept them afloat. Their offense was mediocre. Even this year, DJ Moore wasn't his typical, I have a mediocre quarterback play and I still put up 1,000 yards, was less than 900 this year. Nothing against DJ Moore. It really speaks to, to the quarterback position. But they're in a situation where next year – they are going to give the Bears a prime selection. And if you're the Bears, that's why I'm, I'm kind of on the side of Joel, honestly. I think that, yes, maybe this, this might be the, one of the crazier hauls we've seen, but this is even crazier because next year, let's say, God forbid, Justin Fields doesn't work out and the Panthers are really that bad. I don't know if they'll be in contention for the number one overall pick. I don't think that they're that, they're that bad of a franchise, but – I do firmly believe that the Panthers are going to give the Bears a top 10 selection. The, Bear, the, the Panthers really might be so bad offensively that they might give the, the Bears a top five selection. So the, anything you can do to better this defense as of right now, yes, you could probably go corner. There's even conversation that they might go JSN. I don't know if you need to do that. You just traded the second round pick for Claypool. You have Darnell Mooney, who people are forgetting about too. Cole Komet showed out this season for the first time. It seems like we were really waiting on a Cole Komet breakout kind of happened this season. And then you add DJ Moore into the mix. 
this offense finally now it's starting to be as if there's not many excuses for Justin Fields. The big excuse was his offensive line is not good, and that's still that's still an excuse. But because of his ability to escape the pocket, his ability to be one of the best rushers at the quarterback position, and now you have DJ Moore, you have Darnell Mooney, who can be a strong number two, and you also have Chase Claypool, who I still have belief in his upside, obviously was horrendous when he was acquired, but it really t- it's going to take some time for you to essentially get incorporated into the offense. With Frank Reich, I think they'll finally start to do something that will – excuse me, not Frank Reich, I apologize – but but now that you have a strong foundation, I do I do firmly believe that they could get something going with Chicago. It's just a matter of filling the holes, which right now is significant is most definitely their defense. I just look at former trades like in twenty eleven or twenty twelve when Washington traded for RG three and to get the second overall pick, and they gave up like five years worth of first round picks. I don't think this is the biggest haul, but this is a big haul. Ryan Poles did a great job in this trade, and they got the biggest need for this team. Wide receiver DJ Moore, you now pair him with Justin Fields. The next step in this offense is to make these passing concepts more advanced and not elementary like they were this past season. This past season, the passing concepts were very simple, easy to defend, and that's why the Bears couldn't pass the ball very well. And also, Justin Fields still struggled with his accuracy, and he has to get better in that aspect as well. Darnell Mooney, Claypool, Komet, you mentioned it, DJ Moore, that's okay. I don't think Claypool is a guy that I'm going to rely on heavily as a third wide receiver. That's why if I was the Bears, I'd still look at trading. The, um, I still look at picking JSN with the ninth overall pick. I've even seen Dalton Kincaid go as high as ninth, the tight end, and out of Utah, and that is pretty surprising because I don't think he'll he'll go high that high in this draft. But for the Bears, it was a great haul. There's no doubt about it. The defense still absolutely stinks. The defense is horrendous. Their cornerbacks, although they invested some picks last season into the secondary, their secondary still is a work in progress. And I I wouldn't be opposed to them drafting somebody like Christian Gonzalez with that pick so they can solidify that room. Defensive line is not good. Linebackers are not good. This team still needs a complete overhaul defensively. And those picks are going to help to bring that team to that direction. But for the Panthers, this is an absolute win. If they get the franchise quarterback, then none of this matters. If they, if if C.J. Stroud or whoever they draft is one of the top guys in the NFL, then all these picks that they traded to get him really does not matter. And I don't think Bryson is getting selected with this pick. I think it's between two guys, AR-15 and C.J. Stroud. You look at the history of quarterbacks Frank Reich has worked with, they are all 6'3 or, or, or above. Bryce Young does not fit that profile, that prototype. I think C.J. Shroud showed in the combine that he is the most mechanically sound passer in this draft, and I, I think he is the best quarterback in this draft. So I'd select them, and the Panthers aren't that far off from competing. Their defense is really good. Their offensive line finished 15th last season, and although you did lose D.J. Moore, we see wide receivers getting found in the second round all the time. We see wide receivers getting found late in the draft all the time. So I think if the Panthers can make one move, like bringing in a Jacoby Myers in free agency, keeping Terrence Marshall, and drafting receiver, this this receiving core could be fine. And ultimately, I trust Frank Reich, Jim Caldwell, and Josh McCown to develop a quarterback. So any quarterback they, they end up with, I'm going to have really high hopes in them developing that guy and if you look right here on mojo terrence marshall's projected to be the first wide receiver like wide receiver number one for carolina he's up 14 percent on the market fields getting that help now goes up 10 percent on the market he's now 31 dollars. dj moore is 18 dollars. he goes up four percent by getting traded to chicago Ultimately, I think this is a win-win for both sides. The Bears didn't need a quarterback, so they traded the first overall pick. And the Panthers need one. You're, you're sitting at nine in no man's land. And ninth overall pick, you, you're not even sure if Will Levis is going to make it to you. So you had to make this move to get your guy. And now the Arizona Cardinals pick at number three becomes highly coveted. And teams are going to be calling them to trade up. Because once those first two quarterbacks are, on the, are off the board, it's possibly going to be AR-15 or Bryce Young number three. And if that's the case, a lot of teams are going to be calling up to move up. And that leaves the Colts in a tough position because they're in no man's land at number four. 
And if I'm the Colts, I'm not going to select a guy like Will Levis number four. Let's not fool ourselves, though. What the Bears just got, the ninth overall pick, an extra first, and a wide receiver number one was an insane hole, giving you still have $70 million left over in free agency. The window is now for the Bears. You're only going to have Justin Fields in this $1 $2 million contract for the next two years until you have to give him that fifth-year option. So for them, I've lost a lot of respect over the last two weeks for Jalen Carter, but they were probably looking at Jalen Carter with the first overall pick. And he will may he may be or he may actually be there with the ninth overall pick. So you got Not all crazy. of those assets while still maybe getting that same player you're looking for. Because defensively, I mean, I'm sorry, you're not taking JSN with the ninth overall pick. You're going with the front seven. You hired Matt Eberflus last year. You have literally nobody in that front seven after training Roquan Smith and Robert Quinn. And the secondary is much less of a need after how much they went to the cornerback position in last year's draft. But here's the thing. What this trade reminds me of, I don't know about you guys, is exactly what you talked about before when the Rams moved up to get Jared Goff in 2016. And you look at the history of teams trading up in the first round and get quarterbacks. It's either boom or it's bust. Two years ago, the 49ers moved up nine spots to get Trey Lance with a third overall pick, TBD. Three years ago, the Packers moved up four spots to get Jordan Love at 26. TBD. Great move. In 2019, I agree. In 2019, the Jets moved up three spots to get Sam Darnold with a third overall pick, massive L. In 2018, the Ravens moved up, trading two seconds to get the 32nd overall pick, grabbing Lamar. Dumb. Now, 20 picks before that, the Cardinals went and grabbed Josh Rosen with the 10th overall selection. Mm. Three picks before that, the Bills went out and got Josh Allen. The oh. year before that, the Texans moved up to the 12th overall pick to get Deshaun Watson. The Chiefs even went up again, up a bit to yeah. the Saints, who wanted Patrick Mahomes, and they got themselves the best quarterback we've seen. But a little bit before that, the Chicago Bears moved up one spot to the second overall pick <laughs> to take Mitch Trubisky. The year before, the Rams traded six picks, two first-rounders, and two seconds for Jared Goff. And they moved off of Goff with that win in the Super Bowl. And the Eagles snagged Carson Wentz. They gave two first to most of the second overall pick. Some other past quarterbacks straight up to get include Paxton Lynch, Johnny Manziel, Teddy Bridgewater, and Robert Griffin. So there's not much of a middle ground here. When you trade up for a quarterback, you're either going to get a slam dunk or you're going to miss pretty badly. And when I look at this year's quarterback class, this is not the year. Next year is with Caleb Williams and Drake May. And for me, CJ Stroud, he reminds me a lot of Jared Goff, too. And <clears> that's what the Packers are getting. Eh, I don't know if this is going to be worth it in four or five years. I don't think you guys didn't put too, too much emphasis on the NFC and what it looks like right now. I mean, it is a complete crapshoot. There's not many good teams. There's not many high-level quarterbacks. A lot of the talent is in the AFC. And John mentioned it. It's win now, right now for the Bears. And when you have a buttload of cap, you have a lot of draft capital, you have guys, you still got some young guys, Brisker, you got Fields, you know, you got some guys out there, but you got to bring in a whole new team and then you just pick up a number one. And number one is so huge for a young quarterback. I mean, you looked at what happened with Jalen Hurts. You looked at what happened with Josh Allen. You know, DJ Moore isn't at that level, but he can give that type of impact for Justin Fields to open up the game more for him. Not to mention the fact that the NFC isn't that good. You know, a division that has Detroit that's coming up, but the Vikings are about to retool. I said retool. The Vikings are about to rebuild. The Packers look like they're about to rebuild. So that's two teams in your division that's literally about to blow it up. Then you got Detroit coming up. But even still, the Eagles might lose some pieces. The Niners are getting up there in age. The Cardinals are not going to be good. The Rams are not going to be good. They still have to fix their offensive line. And then you look at the Seahawks. Yeah, they're going to be around. They're one of those few teams. But the Saints, they picked up their car. But what are they going to be? You know, the Bucks are done. Like, there's just so much stuff in the NFC where this is the opportunity to really come out because there's not many teams. And you make a move like this to help your quarterback. I mean, Justin Fields, you saw last year. He wasn't great play by play as a passer, but he gutted out plays, was able to do things that he others couldn't do with their feet. They could have won a few of those games that defense was actually competent exactly. at some point. You know, that offense <laughs> was able to they score. They put up points. Yeah. Yeah, now you bring in DJ Moore, who I don't know if Darnell's the number two, but he's definitely a high level number three. You know, he's still a speedster. He's still a guy that can get open. Now you bring in DJ Moore. I mean, this is just an A plus for the Chicago Bears. I mean, I, me personally, being a Fields guy, I love this move. For the Panthers, whoever they get at quarterback, this is going to be the one that really settles it, whether it's AR, whether it's CJ. They have to hit on this pick because this is their franchise guy. They have to make this move, and this has to be excellent. But for the Bears, 
you know, getting getting their pick for next year with the Panthers, you look at that offense. It might not be good next year. Bringing in a rookie in that offense, not many weapons, not ideal. You know, bringing in some new guys. You said Terrence Marshall. We don't know what he's going to be. So it's not ideal, but for the Bears, A-plus, man. I was actually just going to ask you guys because Riv just kind of emphasized it a little bit. Are you guys in that same same agreement? Do you think that this pick will be top 10 next year? Yeah. It depends on what the Panthers do in free agency. I'm not uh, – it's too early in the offseason to make judgments on what the record is going to be next season. Well, if you yeah, just had to say so. early prediction, nothing wrong with that. Early, maybe, maybe around Looking 10. about it right now, very early 12. on, 8 to 12, all right. It could be 8 to could, something like that. It is hard to say. Um, and it is also important to note, Fields, definitely not an accurate passer last year. But when he threw to Darnell Mooney, he had a 69% completion percentage. Everyone else was in the 50s. So it goes a long way when you're throwing to a guy like Equinemius St. Brown and Vilas Jones compared to yep. Darnell Mooney, who has real yep. talent. So, you know, surrounding surrounding your quarterback with weapons is always going to help, which makes me a little bit worried about this Panthers rookie who's going to come in with Terrace Marshall, Shai Smith, uh, Deontay Foreman's a free agent who's probably their best uh, offensive player right now. So this it's going to be an uphill battle. <clears throat> Yeah, I think they'll be fine. Uh, it's much easier to find receivers nowadays than it is a quarterback. And uh, just knowing but just knowing Frank Reich's history, I don't think they'll throw a rookie into the fire unless they feel comfortable in the roster they have assembled or the scheme they have assembled around that quarterback. You know, I, I think whichever way they go, they're going to make sure that the guy that they select is going to be in the best position possible to succeed. You know, I don't. Frank Reich is not the Jets. You know, we ruined Zach Wilson, unfortunately. I don't think they'll ruin their quarterback. And that's why I think we should have seen this coming. In Indianapolis, he had well, Zach eight Wilson's different. That's what you wow. think. Casual. <laughs> no, and, and you know you know what I thought about? You know what I thought about? <laughs> it's interesting. You know, I love the 2021 quarterback draft class and, and what it's shaping out to be. Everybody's getting help. Trevor Lawrence gets Calvin Ridley. Justin Fields gets DJ Moore and Zach Wilson gets Aaron Rodgers. They're all in great <laughs> positions to succeed in the future. You know, oh all of God. them are in great positions. And when talking about the Bears, and I don't mean a two mile horn, but I've always been down with the calls. Always been down with the calls with the Chicago Bears, making sure they succeed, giving them my prayers. Holy shit. Making sure they're on my oh mind. Oh my God. Justin this Fields. Is- is, such a, this Justin is one of the Fields, worst moments in Pickett's side history. Justin Fields is going to have a great season next year, Dells, and I want you to stay on a hype train because you yeah. fell off. Did, did, he, did he fall yeah. off? I, I guess so. I don't know. Dells fell off bad. <laughs> kind of like I'll how he what, fell it off was, on a Tatum was, MVP ooh. agenda. Hate fell that. off it, quick on that, buddy. It was funny when you showed it. Prior to the show, I was laughing. I thought you were trolling, but then you actually showed it on the show, and I'm in I'm in disbelief, Joel.